if you had told me the exact score of that game would be 17 16 i would have been like yes that is exactly correct it will be 17 to 16 between these two crappy crappy football teams <laughs> well stop me if you heard this one before but jimmy garoppolo leads his team to victory adding to an already impressive 70 percent career winning percentage with a gritty 17 to 16 victory over those Denver Broncos. Kyle Ledbetter, are you a believer now in the legend of Hemi Garoppolo? I guess I believed in it before, but I think the legend you're talking about is how amazing it was that he went from quarterback purgatory for four years with the San Francisco 49ers of Niners fans being like, do we have a quarterback? Do we not have a quarterback? Then they traded three first round picks for the quarterback that would replace him. And they still couldn't get rid of him. Technically Jimmy Garoppolo lasted longer with the 49ers than Trey Lance because Jimmy Garoppolo played a game more recently than Trey Lance in their last games with the 49ers. Technically speaking, Jimmy Garoppolo outlasted his replacement in San Francisco. So I've been believing in that legend for years. You just, Jimmy G is like a parasite. You just can't get rid of him no matter how hard you try. But now he's with the Raiders and he had a great game, 20 for 25 passing, 80% completion percentage. That's all time great good. If he could do that for a season, he would break. And this is a weird stat. Sam Bradford's all time record for completion percentage. Jimmy G, 80% completion percentage, 200 yards, two touchdowns, one interception that was pretty bad. I'll admit like throwing an interception at the goal line is pretty bad, but Garoppolo Finished with 107 passer rating. The Raiders scored 17 points, but 17 points was all they needed because of the hard-nosed Raider defense that, well, no, just the Broncos offense isn't very good. But besides the point, 17 points was all they needed to get the win. So Jimmy Garoppolo, above average week one. I will sum up Jimmy Garoppolo in one word, and it was used by Raiders defensive end Max Crosby. Dog. He came out there and had some dog-like traits on the field. Because my man ran for a eight-yard run to clinch the game on third and seven. This, too, in a game that he got banged up in. Because first drive of the game, I don't know if Sean Payne and them were out there headhunting. But uh, certainly, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo went down right away. And it was looking scary early on. Brian Hoyer came into the game briefly to handle some snaps. Because, yeah, shot to the head. Uh, There was another moment, too, where someone was going after the uh, injured uh, foot of Jimmy Garoppolo, too. So definitely the defense for the Denver Broncos didn't hold back. And uh, Jacoby Myers took a concussion late in this game. And Jacoby Myers was the top target throughout the game. as Two touchdowns for Jacoby. It led the Raiders in receiving yards, which makes sense because, I mean, Devontae Devontae got his. uh, And I think that that's going to be a relationship we see develop more. But Devontae also had to deal with Patrick Sertain all day. And Patrick Sertain certainly was a problem for the Raiders offense. Uh, You mentioned the defense, though. The defense surprised me because, okay, the Broncos came out firing. I think it was in our group chat that you said that the old Russ is back. At least it looked like the old Russ was back for a brief moment, if for nothing else. But yeah, in the second half, This Raiders defense, they shut them down. I think they held them to three points. The 13 of the points that the Broncos had came in the first half. I'm pretty sure they held them just three points in that second half, which Mm -hmm. is more resilience than I think that the Raiders showed all of last season. They had yeah, they, shout out to shout out to them because Russell Wilson in the first half had 13 points with 17 of 19, 125 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, a 130 passer rating. Russell Wilson was carving up the Raiders defense in the first half because the Raiders defense, and this feels pretty factual to say at this point, is not good. It has not been good for years. It will continue to not be good this year, but they had a very good half to lead a comeback victory against the Denver Broncos in a second half of football that (laughs) produced 10 total points. The Raiders had seven, the Broncos had three. The most tedious, boring football (laughs) that was also very exciting at the same time somehow. But yeah, I, I think the Raiders won that game and they would not have won that game last year. And maybe you can say Jimmy Garoppolo is the difference in that one. Maybe you could say it was less mistakes by the play calling and on the defensive side of the ball. But I think this is a game that they lose 
at this exact same time last year. And that's a small mark of improvement for a Raiders team that went five and 12 or six and 11 or whatever they went last year. Well, I think for the Broncos too, like one of the big things is just kind of like the Raider just made some adjustments. Like one of the big things in particular was the fact that they kind of made it a point to limit the Broncos ability to throw downfield. I think it also helped, of course, that Jerry Judy was out in this game. So Cortland Sutton was really the main only target that Russell Wilson had, even for play calling sake. I, I think it one thing that was striking was that Sean Payton and them kind of abandoned the run. Javante Williams and P. Ryan were doing a great job against the Raiders, but at one point it just seemed like they wanted to get a little bit too pass happy. And this uh, concerning trend, obviously, when we talk about like uh, Russell Wilson taking over the offense himself and just letting Russ cook, sometimes, you know, like if you have a lead, baby the lead. And that's what the Broncos had at one point. And they kind of veered away from just killing time, clock management. And that's when you allow a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo to get back in the game. Like there was a point where the Broncos could have easily sealed this one. I got to give a shout out to that linebacker uh, Diablo, which great name, great football name, by the way, um, making like a tackle on once a third down and holding the Broncos to a field goal on a pivotal drive. I think this was the drive directly after the Jimmy Garoppolo interception. If it wasn't for that, that was almost a game-saving tackle in itself. And that set up what obviously turned into the game-winning touchdown and the game-sealing drive for the Raiders. Within like a five-minute time span, you had a quite the turn of events for the Raiders and Broncos in that couple series right there. I, I think it's a good benchmark for the Raiders. Now they face the Bills in week two. The Bills are coming off this tough loss to the Jets. Josh Allen all over the place. We'll see what the defensive strategy is because if the the strategy for the Raiders in this game against Broncos, like I mentioned was limiting the deep ball. That's probably the biggest thing you got to worry about with the bills more so is limiting the deep ball. So I kind of wonder if they're going to employ a similar strategy in that game. It worked for them. And if they can manage the clock, I, I imagine Josh Jacobs is going to have a better game too. In week two, he only had like 63 yards in this game and credit to the Broncos defense. I, I still think this is a top level Broncos defense and they did their job in this game as much as they could uh, with the dink and dunk slasher offense that the Raiders have. Yeah. I think it's a good start for the Raiders in week one. I think that for Josh McDaniels to get his guy, his guy and Jimmy Garoppolo and him to come in and win week one was big to get at least the locker room kind of gelling together because I felt like this locker room felt a little divided last year, right? Everyone was blaming everybody. Everyone didn't like everybody. I still don't know what's going on with the Chandler Jones situation as well. That's still an enigma in their locker room, but it seems like it's getting a little better. Seems like they're getting a little better and winning cures all, right? That's the thing. Winning cures all in this sport. Now, granted, the Raiders are not going to win more than seven times this year, but winning does cure all for the time being. And the Broncos only had six offensive possessions in this game, which is something also that I was surprised by. The Raiders had seven. The Broncos had six offensive possessions in that entire football game. So both teams were big on controlling time of possession in this game. A lot of long, drawn out drives that led to field goals on both sides uh, the Broncos kicking field goals, the Raiders kicking field goals. So a very Vic Fangio, a nod to Vic Fangio of nine minute field goal drives on both sides of the ball in this game. So yeah, I, I think the Raiders are, like I said earlier, winning a game that they wouldn't have won last year. They'll probably be like eight and a half point dogs against uh, the Buffalo bills, but they love being dogs when you have a dog like Jimmy Garoppolo on your team. Like Max Crosby said, everyone's fine being a dog when you got dogs like Garoppolo leading you to victory and winning games because that's what Jimmy always brings to the table. So yeah, the Raiders are going to be underdogs in a lot of their games this year. So it's good that you have a dog at quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo who can game manage the holy hell out of this incredible offense with two of the best skill position players any of us have ever seen. Let the big dogs roam. All right. <laughs> That's going to do it for that one, guys. Uh, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Subscribe to our channel. If you have any thoughts about the Raiders and their big week one victory and moving forward into week two against the Buffalo Bills, we'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. From Juju and Kyle, stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you next time.